up the bathroom passes, cutting classes, squeezing asses. Smoking blunts was a daily routine since 13. A chubby nigga on the scene. I used to have to trade deuce and the deuce deuce. My bubble goose, now I got the Mac in my knapsack. Lounging black, smoking sacks up and axe and sidekicks. With my sidekicks, rocking fly kicks. Honey's wanna chat, but all we wanna know is where the party at. Feeling good? Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Hope you're doing good. Hope you're feeling awesome. I feel a fantabulous. Fantabulous. I am doing very, very well. Feeling good. Um, and again, this is not the Wingnut Roundup. This is not the Wingnut Roundup. Just making sure everybody knows that right on the outset. We did a stream last week. And it was part one on this very special Wingnut special. We're going to do part two today, but this is not the Roundup. The Roundup is still happening. The Roundup's going to happen this Sunday, uh, which will be the 21st. And the reason for this is, of course, I'm going on motorcycle tour. Uh, I will be traveling from New Orleans up, the, up Mississippi to Memphis, uh, down into Alabama, over to North Carolina, back up Chattanooga, uh, Pigeon Forge area, Somerset, Kentucky, and then back to Nashville before I fly home. And that's going to take up uh, most of what will be the end of April and the very beginning of May. So because of that, uh, the Wingnut Roundup is probably only going to be about two hours it's not going to be as long as it usually is. This should be the only Wingnut Roundup this year that that really impacts because all the rest of them, I don't have any tours like right when I'm supposed to be doing it. I should go to Transylvania, Louisiana. I don't even know where that is. Huh. I don't know. There's Is there a Transylvania, Louisiana? That's fascinating. 
Crazy, crazy. Pigeon Forge is beautiful. Pigeon Forge is hilarious. It's hilarious. Like, yeah, so there are theme parks that are huge. Disney World is huge, you know. Universal Studios is kind of big. Like, lots of them are, are pretty big. Pigeon Forge, there's Dollywood, which is pretty sizable. But Pigeon Forge itself has, I don't know if it's hundreds, but it's got to be over a hundred, like, attractions and stuff. You know, there there's weird things to do all over Pigeon Forge. And I think if you took all of the touristy things in Pigeon Forge, mashed them all together, it would be bigger than any theme park, at least in, in the United States, I think. It is insane how much is there. It is wild, absolutely wild. Um, and it, but it is beautiful. Uh, that place, Gatlinburg, Tennessee, is unbelievable. Beautiful, beautiful area. So I'm very, very much looking forward to uh, to checking this out, having a good time, and uh, of course making some good money and riding motorcycles. Drum, 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 drum. Speaking of motorcycles, I have a new TikTok that I've been slowly working on, and uh, you can find it. Go to TikTok and type in moto da- moto dot holiday. If you want to follow along, the reason for this is I've been trying to figure out where I'm going to put my like tour material because I'm bringing my laptop, my production work laptop, I'm bringing a, a, a little mini sound uh, uh, mixer microphone. I'm going to have my uh, Insta 360 camera. I'm going to have my GoPro. I'm going to document everything I can about these tours because these tours are amazing. They're really fun. And that's where it's going to be. That's where it will all be posted. Hopefully daily vlogs uh, showing, like, what we were doing. Um, I'll try and get as much as I can for, like, walkthroughs of Graceland. Because we go to Graceland on this tour. Wild. Absolutely wild. Uh, maybe I'll even do a, a fried peanut butter, peanut butter and banana sandwich uh, review. I don't know. Don't force me to break my streak and get TikTok after all. TikTok's awesome, dude. I love it. I love TikTok. I, I'm not going to lie. TikTok is rad. It's a rad, rad little thing. And it's not just for, you know, people doing dances and, and crap like that. Like, it's pretty great. It's pretty great. It will suck your soul, though. You will lose, you will lose way too much time browsing TikTok. Like, you might need an intervention. Some, some people do. Instagram is already a time sink. I just can never really get into Instagram. I don't know. Just isn't, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I had a fried peanut butter and banana sandwich last time I was at Graceland, and it was actually very, very delicious. Very delicious. I totally understand uh, why Elvis became old Elvis. You know what I mean? Not for very long, though. Oof. Oof. Big oofs. Anyway, I hope things are going really good for you guys. Uh, again, the, the whole reason why we're doing a wingnut special is because I was going to have to shortchange you for the wingnut roundup. So instead of only having three hours of me streaming, uh, you're going to have six. Because you'll have the two hours uh, last week, two hours today, and two hours for the actual proper roundup. So that's, that's, that's how I fix this for you. I, I'm going to shortchange you an hour, so I'll give you... Four more. <laughs> That's how things work, right? That's how things work. Fuck it. Let's do it. Um, it does unfortunately mean that, of course, we are, we're not doing this at, like, prime time because I'm in a crunch trying to get ready, but whatever. Now, previously on the Wingnut special, we have been watching uh, this, this incredible exchange on Super Soldier Talk, Jimmy Payne and Lauren B., now, they were talking about CERN, the Eclipse, and future updates, but we stopped right as Jimmy Payne was about to explain to us how Resident Evil is real. Just, just putting it out there, like, that's where we're going to have our jumping off point. Um, I do also want to mention, of course, like, obviously, get on TikTok, follow moto.holiday, but also, we are streaming... Right now on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash realjeffholiday. Uh, and that's also how you can sometimes see uh, emojis and stuff fill the screen. And, and we, we like to have fun over on Twitch as often as I possibly can, except when I'm incredibly busy. 
like right now. So without further ado, let's jump back into the wild world of wing nuts with James Rink, Jimmy Payne, whoever she is. And uh, let's go. Vietnam was going on. You know what I mean? Going I, I, on. I, I can't be everywhere and any, anywhere. But if you watch the movie um, Resident Evil, now Resident Evil, believe it or not, is, is based off of uh, D.C. New Mexico. Okay. And uh, there is a little small train that you get in and go down into the base. <laughs> yes. And uh, but everything in that movie is is it's not a total one hundred percent accurate, but it's it's pretty 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 much you know in the nutshell with that movie. In a nutshell. Do you think that I love I love that he has to be very the thing that he points out the most is that the opening where you have to take a train like deep deep into the hive in, in Resident Evil. Well, that's definitely how it is. It's how you get into the base. You know, it, it's great. It's great. They even had like zombie viruses down there. Uh, yeah. There. I've so. seen Night of the Living Dead. Um, that happened uh, north of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Mm. E e Evans uh, City Cemetery. Um I was there when uh when that happened. Were you? Uh, Coincidentally, when they were able to bring back uh, a deceased person. <laughs> <clears throat> Just so happens, in the middle of Jimmy Payne being a super soldier, an eleven-year-old uh, hitman for Ho Chi Minh. Uh, serving on the Starship Enterprise, he also just happened to be in this tiny town north of Pittsburgh, uh, Pins Pittsburgh Pennsylvania, uh, when Night of the Living Dead happened. Incredible. And there, hey. there was like some kind of like mixture of chemicals that was spilling into the ground from all from all the toxic dump. No. Well, the first one was done with. Um, Don't be an idiot, James. Uh, uh, it was an electrical pulse that was able to regenerate um there was a, a man a black man who had died at the va oh. and his name was ben ben and uh ben what he was he had heart trouble and they put him in the hospital the va the pennsylvania va hospital yeah and uh he signed a waiver his family signed a waiver is that you know, if, can we experiment with him if we try to save his life? Like you do. the family said yes. Well, he died. <laughs> oh, that sucks. And they didn't have the money to bury him, but his body ended up uh, a couple of miles uh, away from the cemetery, and he was uh, brought back to life. Mm. I actually met Ben yeah. and um, ben a talked nice guy. with him. But his, but, but his body. How you doing, Ben? That's interesting. How do you feel about Star Trek? Did you ever see Star Trek? Did you know I fucked Spock's cousin? It's true. Body cannot regenerate even after death. Just keep him in, in the freezer. Yeah. Uh, did he try to like eat your face off to convert no, you? <laughs> no, but a lot of people uh, when they do get brought back is that they uh, they lose their mind of uh, the shock of death. Mm. They remember uh, their death, and a lot of people don't know this, but I talked to Ben. Ben, and when Ben was in the coffin, when his niece and, and nephews were all around it yeah ben could hear them talking mm. uh even though he was dead because when he was reanimated uh he told me that he could hear them but after they closed the coffin he couldn't Wait, yeah that's how so they can hear uh, if you got something to say you need to say it at the coffin but they definitely can hear you now once <laughs> don't talk shit 
over your dead relatives just in case. He definitely did not fuck Princess Diana. He did fuck Spock's cousin, but yeah. The body rots and the brain rots. Yeah. You know, you know they they can't. Can't. And so the soul <laughs> is still in that body even if it's rotting? Uh, their soul will eventually leave the body. Yeah. But... Um, After you get a good rotting in. The body... What happens is they'll just rot to the they just fall they just fall apart. Now, the part about the drums and the chemicals, um, when the bodies fell apart, uh, they would just put them uh, into the uh, chemicals. But they were experimenting trying to make a super soldier. Okay, hang on, hang on. I think he has his movies mixed up because he only said first he talked about Resident Evil, and there's no drums in Resident Evil, and then he was talking about Night of the Living Dead, and there's no bodies in drums in Night of the Living Dead. I think he's talking about Return of the Living Dead. I think that's what he's trying to say. I'm pretty sure, and it sounds like he probably watched Return of the Living Dead. Three recently because that definitely is like zombies into super soldiers which also amazing movie incredible probably the best one out of the whole series just saying and uh so they would uh store these um uh, kind of like you do pickles you know you want to preserve pickles yeah well they would dump them in those uh, uh ddt and uh <laughs> okay you know I've seen the uh, the drums. We left we left one of them underneath a, some stairs uh, staircase. Uh huh. And the next team behind us came in about two years later, and they found them. You know, but um, it, yeah, we did a show on it. Um, maybe you get Laura to uh, to view the show, James. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time on it because we got a lot to cover tonight. We sure do. Okay. Wow. So we got over that. So let's see here. How about <laughs> we can do? Oh, let's go. At, um, I think the last thing we can talk about CERN, and then we can move on to the NASA shooting up rockets. Up. Oh, please. So, um, why the um, why are so many Mandela effects occurring when every time they turn CERN on? How about we start with maybe? How about you, Lauren? Let's hear you. What What do you think that is about? Um, well, turning on turning on a, a machine like that actually causes a dimensional rift mm. and kind of a fracture to occur. Sure. Um, and it actually has a bleed over effect into other parallel universes, and it alters what happens in the past and in the in the future. So that's why people experience um, having different memories and you know things being different. Uh, that's because when you're opening uh, a portal to a lower dimension like that, it's actually going to impact the physical reality mm. uh, of the dimension above it. And okay. it's actually going to have a bleed through effect, which is why people are reality is absolutely shifting uh, because they've, they've done that with the portal that they've opened that. So it's actually having a very negative effect on the physical reality in this dimension. You know, what's so like what, what, what baffles me about this, uh, and, and don't get me wrong, out of as far as it goes with like wing nutty conspiracies and things like that, uh, this is fine. This is fine. Um, it, it's it's at least mostly harmless, except that it makes people you know shit their pants in fear. But what is so wild to me is that CERN, as as uh, as. Uh, Chaotic Kitten was saying in the Twitch chat, it is fascinating what they do at CERN, how they use particle accelerators. Like, the whole science behind it is fascinating. Really fucking cool. It's awesome. You don't need to lie or make something up to make it more interesting. Like, it, there, there is every reason to be fascinated with CERN and to want to learn about particle physics learn about the fundamentals of our universe, how these things work. Um, but that's hard. <laughs> that's difficult. What's not difficult is to be like, oh, yeah, tear it apart reality and fucking demon portals, dimensional bleed through, blah, 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 blah. What kind of machine does CERN explain to me how it works? It's a particle accelerator. They try and make uh, in this giant ring as much of a true vacuum as possible. 
and it's powered by massive electromagnets, and there's, there's, it's very complicated. But the purpose of it is to take fundamental particles, the smallest of the small that you possibly can, and accelerate them as fast as they can, as close to the speed of light as you possibly can, and then smash them together. Because what happens when you can break something that is so small, the most basic, at, at first, when we first started, what we understand is the smallest of the small, fundamental pieces of what makes up reality. And when they explode, they make other shit. Smaller things. And then we can see what those smaller things are. And then we can understand, well, why are these the smallest? Oh, they're not the smallest. Okay. Well, how are they even held together? How, are they, how do they have like composite parts? Why do they weigh as much as they do? Why do they do this? Why do they do that? Like, it's crazy, crazy town how absolutely bizarre reality actually is when you get into subatomic particle theory. Like, I mean, it's so nuts. It's so cool. It's so cool. But that's hard. And it's much easier to, uh, to, to wave away science magic in favor of magic magic, right? You know, like, that's why. It's very lazy. What about you, Jimmy? What do you think, um, why do you think Mandela effects occur with the opening of CERN portals? I would have to concur what she said is very true. Um, <laughs> I concur. You know, it's kind of like when I was at Camp Hero, we had a technician that was reading a book about uh, the wreck of the Titan. Mm -hmm. And it was about a ship that hit an iceberg and, uh, and sunk. And, and the book... Uh, came out like 17 years prior to uh, 1912. Yeah. But it was an old book. And, <laughs> and the supervisor said, what are you reading there? And he says, I'm reading a book about a ship that hit, hit an iceberg. And then the guy paused and said, you know, my, my grandfather had um, money uh, in that ship. And, he's, and the supervisor said, what cargo were they hauling? Uh -huh. do, they, do they have a safe? And the technician said, I don't know, but I, I can look into it. So two, three weeks pass, you know, I'm back down at Camp Hero. And he brings a, a, a printout of the inventory that was in the ship. Uh huh. You know, what insurance uh, paid off. And when they found out what was in that safe, they said, well, look, we're going to do a time jump. We're running low on money. And the ships, uh, um, we, what we want to do is, 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 is get into the safes and, and get the money out. See, back then, people didn't have credit cards. When you traveled, you traveled with your money. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Back in the day, they didn't have credit cards. I'm doing something real quick. Um, okay, uh, right. Well, there was a lot of different ways to like travel with money as well. You could divest and, and promissories and things like that. But whatever, it's fine. Jimmy, please, for the love of God, just just get get back into it, please. And um, so when we did the time jump. Onto um, onto the ship. Um, we uh, while we were while, we while sent we some while. of our females down into the dance hall. Yo, yeah, Jeff. Remember I how a while back I said I was going to see Highland? Well, I had gotten the date wrong. I'm seeing them today. Uh, Gonna be fire. Uh, also, my astral projection has revealed to me that that your awesome hair is a conspiracy to make my bald head feel naked. Aw, less than three. Uh, listen, bald is beautiful. Bald is beautiful, all right? I just, uh, I, I, my, all, everybody on my mother's side of the family, bald is a motherfucker. But my dad, still just thick, luxurious hair. I, I just rolled the dice, and I got a little lucky on that. Uh, there are other traits I got from my dad's side, which are not great, and I will not be revealing here. 
Um, but I am very jealous that you get to go see Hai Lung. I love Hai Lung. I want to see Hai Lung so damn bad. So goddamn bad. Um, also, uh, Drunken Peasants, Ben just popped in and said that at one point in Eugene, there was a runaway saw blade. And uh, I need to see this. It's very quick. Okay, hang on. What is this? This is like two weeks ago, and apparently the guy is still shook up as a motherfucker. Let me see. What is this? Where's the saw blade? Whoa! <laughs> what? What? That's crazy. That's absolutely mental. Hang on. What? It comes zipping through here. Wow. That dude barely missed it. He's like closing the door. It hasn't even shut by the time it starts zipping. Wow. That is some Final Destination shit. That's so crazy. Dude, that was awesome. Thank you, Ben. Wow. Wow. Woof. No thanks. No fucking thank you. They're cutting concrete on the street? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I hadn't even heard about that. They've decided apparently this year that they're just going to cut up every single street in downtown Eugene. It's really annoying. Oh, and he was heading into a liquor store. I bet I know exactly which liquor store that was. Uh, I think that's a big we big one on uh, Lawrence and 11th. That looks like it. Anyway, all uh, right, moving on. A lug and a torch uh, uh, in there, you know, to the uh, to the safes, and we cut the safes open because the the lights were off when you were you. No, know, the lights were still on when I, when we opened the safe up. Uh, but what, so why why were you carrying a torch to cut the safe open? Oh, oh, I see. Okay, so you get the hope diamond. Okay, yes. You get the hope diamond out. And but sure, ah. surely there would have been security around you. Like, nope, you can't, guys. Oh, uh, okay. So the hope diamond was in this wreck, in a safe, in a wreck on the bottom of the ocean. Fascinating. Does anybody even remember what the hope diamond is? I, I, I don't think it's been relevant for a long time. Am I not supposed to do this? So well, you know, they were taken care of. They were neutralized. But what had happened, that vessel had had a, a, a collision in port uh, about two years prior. And uh, they took, um, it hit the side, the back side of the ship, and it broke one of the high beams uh, in it. And they riveted it back, but the vibration from the motor would knock the rivets out. So it was decided to shuttle, they were going to scuttle the ship and make it look like it was an accident. But what happened was they, we had a guy that went down there and, and uh, there was a valve in the bottom of the ship about the size of a fire hydrant and he opened it up purposely to shuttle the ship. Uh-huh. To and, shuttle or uh, scuttle? They were going to get the um, the California to pull up al alongside and get everybody off, but Montauk lost power. They blew they blew a tube or a fuse, and by the time that they got Montauk back on, two Aww. hours. I just I oh this is so sad. I was uh, I just heard she must have been having a bad nightmare. Come here, baby. Come here. I know you're so tired. You're so sleepy. Come here. Come here, baby. Come here. Oh, oh. oh my God. Oh. She must have been having such a bad nightmare. I could hear her whimpering in her sleep through my headphones. This poor baby was having a nightmare. Penny, you having a nightmare, baby girl? Oh, my poor sweet puppy dog. We you having a nightmare, girl? It's okay. You're safe. Yes, all of the penny emojis in the Twitch chat. We must flood flood good vibes for uh, a poor a poor poor tortured baby. Poor tortured baby. My pretty girl. Mm. 
Poor dog. Poor girl. This is in my recommended list. Really? Whoa. Hey, so welcome. You are probably one of the very, very few people that anything has been recommended for my channel in forever. That's dope. That's super cool. We're watching some wing nuts uh, to catch some people up, just in case they might be new. Thank you, Penny. Uh, we are listening to Super Soldier Talk. And uh, Jimmy Payne started out telling us how Resident Evil was real, and then uh, Night of the Living Dead was real. But currently, he's attempting to talk about how the Mandela effect is amplified because they turned on CERN, which is splitting reality or something. <laughs> something. Hours later, the ship is sunk. So and you sunk with it, with the, with the treasure? Huh? No, we got the treasure off. We were we were teleported off as the ship was starting to tilt. Teleported off. I got off of it just in time. Oh. With uh, we had like about five or six duffel bags full of uh, of of valuables, plus the Hope Diamond. And um, when I got back at Camp Hero, mm. you know. You know, there was, you know, 60 or so years have passed, 70 or so years have passed. Uh-huh. And uh, it's just mind-boggling because the ship was not supposed to sink. And that's what kind of turned me against the program. Uh, I like how he said mind-boggling. Fantastic. And keep in mind, he's not talking about the Titanic. Unless, or is... Because, well, he said originally, uh, he read an article about the Titan, and I thought he was talking about the submersible. But maybe he's talking about the Titanic? Did he go to the Titanic and then he got, like, teleported or something? That's weird. That's very weird. Yeah. Uh, that innocent people drowned. And so um, that was my turning point. But it wasn't done on intention. It just well, but I mean, if you're outside of time, you first of all, okay, what? I forgot the name of the ship that you said they were going to send another ship to rescue everybody. So it was you, it was a California, but California. Cal, but it, it ended up the Carpathia is what came to the rescue. California, the captain went to sleep. Now, <laughs> um, why? Actually, it's not the Titanic; it's the Olympic that sunk um and um a lot of people the the titanic conspiracies well they say well you know the olympic was was painted with red and the titanic no i take that back <laughs> take the, your time the uh the, the titanic had red primer No, the Titanic had had black primer and the Olympic. Well, it was just backwards. One <laughs> ship had red primer and the other one had black primer. Okay. But when they went down to the Titanic, it had black primer. Okay. And that and it's supposed to have red primer. Gotcha. So you got a lot of people, you know, saying, well. The two ships had different primers. Okay, okay. Christopher Wallace helping us out. He says, I think he said Titanic, but he was referring to The Last Voyage of the Titan, a book that came out 10 years before the Titanic, but the details were similar. Okay, okay. He's making this up as he goes. I, I mean, you don't know. Maybe he, I mean, he was telling us he teleported out. So, like, I mean, anything's possible. Keep in mind, this dude served on the the USS Enterprise, the spaceship, not the not the aircraft carrier. <laughs> but that's not the primer of the metal they pulled up. So a Titanic never sunk. Okay, it was uh the Olympic. It was just renamed. The Olympic was just renamed. Mm, mm. It was Olympic that that sunk. Gotcha. Titanic never did. Well, where is it? Uh, and do you know why they, they switched the names? 
Uh, because the White Star line Amazing. on both ships. <laughs> he scared the shit out of me with the that. the insurance, when the collision occurred in port and damaged the, uh, the high beams, yeah. uh, the, the insurance... Oh, yeah. No, no, no. This is the same guy. This is the same guy that claimed that he seduced Spock's cousin with a candy bar and they had a love affair and fucked all the time. Same guy. Same guy. Yeah, that's why... That's why anytime something comes out with Jimmy Payne, I'm like, we're watching this. We have to watch this. It's always wild. It's so crazy. Insurance wouldn't pay off, and the ship was, well, it, it couldn't. It, every time they were ribbit, the high beams back in place. Ribbit. They ribbit the vibration the beams. of the motor would, would break the rivets. The rivets. So <laughs> what they did was just change the names of the ships. And, um,. <laughs> <laughs> and and did a did a switch in port. There is some historical evidence on that, but I'm sure that you can go to a Titanic conspiracy and huh. pull all of it up. Yeah. Well, what about the, the did you the Hope Diamond? That yeah. was recovered. Okay, and they say that, that's cursed. Is that is that true? What's that? Was the Hope Diamond actually cursed? No. Uh, well, you know, it's a good it's a, it's a that's a good question because we had a ship that sunk, you know. Uh, that Hope Diamond, some uh, prince out of uh, Saudi Arabia bought it. It's in a private collection right now. It's at the Smithsonian. Wow. You can literally go see the Hope Diamond right now at the Smithsonian. Like, you can literally go see it. it it's, it's at the Smithsonian. What are you even talking about? Like, don't get me wrong. It's a big goddamn diamond. It's a huge diamond. But like, it, it's it, this is not this is not a thing. It's we know where it is. You can go see it. <laughs> what? Ugh. And that that with those assets were being used to fund Montauk. Yeah. Yeah. Now I tell you something else that. Uh, how Montauk was was uh, funded, but back in World War II, uh, the Germans sealed off. She, uh, Lauren, looks like she's really bored and ready for a nap. I so every now and then, Lauren will like hear something that Jimmy says, and she rolls her eyes like, "Oh my fucking god!" But then, like James will ask her a question, and she's just as crazy. She's she is a nutter absolutely nutter and that makes it even funnier because she's like oh this guy's so full of shit and then she's like everything is pain and a conspiracy and the world is falling apart and demons have come across through a fucking portal our reality is shattering and i live in constant agony and fear of the future and you're like wow okay shit <laughs> off a train full of gold gold and valuable paintings in a in a tunnel and Patton found out about it. And Patton was actually murdered because of that. But when I was at Camp Hero, mm. what they did, they found that uh, that train. So what they took a ship called the Baldwin. A that shit? Was being decommissioned. They took a shit called the Boglum? What? It was going to be brought to Scrapyard. So what they did, they loaded that ship up with that gold from the... Uh... I mean, they loaded that shit up with gold. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm hearing shit. Am I... I I, I heard... I, I know he's trying to say ship, but I hear shit. Clear as fucking day. Ribbits. The ribbits on the shit. Uh, from that train. And they got that ship right <laughs> off... Ah! The uh, the edge of uh, the lighthouse at Montauk, <laughs> and the sick the the ship sank. That was shit. Right there before they get the goat off. God. So what happened was it's like 1962, I think it, it sunk. So they had to get some divers out there, and um, you know, offload the goat. On you know. Uh, why the why the shit was on the bottom, <laughs> and then they got a a crank. Got to get the goat off the shit. That goat's on some shit. It needs an intervention. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> oh god. It sanked. The shit sanked. But we got the goat off the shit before it sanked. Train ship. And they had to lift it up. They uh, put some airbags in it. And they lift that ship up. And uh, and from there, they brought it to the scrapyard and, um, you know, scrapped it. But one of the divers uh, got between the ship and the winch, and he got killed. Killed. But that was the USS Baldwin uh, <laughs> that, had, that the go was loaded on and mm. stuck into... Uh, you know, stuck back to uh, Camp Hero. And I think there was something like about eight or ten billion dollars that uh, was on that That's uh, a lot of money. train. That's a lot of money. Oh my God. Yeah. Wow. It's a lot of money. Where is this man from? Kara, he is from the future. All right. I hope that helps. <laughs> and the past. So I, I thought Patton was murdered. Well, I was. What I was, what I heard was that he wanted to run for president. No, well, I'm I'm pretty sure that might have been in his back of his mind, but uh, yeah, I mean, exactly, they, dude, exactly. This is the, okay. All right, everybody's giggling about the accent and shit, but look, you you, you nailed it. This is what it, it's like. How in the future, like it, all of humanity is merged and we're one monoculture, blah blah blah, or whatever. I don't know. Who gives a fuck? But. This is everybody's accent in the future. This is what we have to look forward to. And I personally cannot wait. Cannot wait. I think it's incredible. Or Dania says the USS Baldwin, did it shoot someone too? I don't want to laugh at that. I don't want to laugh at that. I'm going to choose not to, <laughs> but it's not easy. It is really, really not easy. Holy shit. Oof. They would have seen it through the looking glass. They would say, oh, no, not nuts, not, because it would probably would have affected all their projects. So why why didn't they? So why were they so, so opposed to Patton? He, he was going to go public with with finding the the, uh, uh, the train. Yeah. And because it was a, you know, a black a black ops operation, um, they killed him. Uh, killed. That the. That wreck was was staged, just like Princess Diana's wreck was staged. <laughs> We're back to well, that what again. What do you think, Lauren? Um, do you think there's more to the story? The more reason, just the gold, and maybe one from president. Maybe there's something else. Maybe what? What do you think? I can definitely take a look. Um, oh, I oh, 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 oh! Lauren is going to uh, uh, use her powers of remote viewing to to add further context to what we're talking about. And I just cannot fucking wait. Hey! Captain Cobbs and first mate Jimmy Payne on the SS Bogolin. Yep, that's right. That's right. Captain Cobbs and first mate Jimmy Payne. SS Bogolin. Hell yeah. Thank you very much, Random Guy. Appreciate you. Mwah, mwah, mwah. And supposedly, like, uh, his son was adopted by the Trump family. So that became our president. Wait, what? It's actually oh, is... Okay. Wait. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. I need I need to back this up for a second. I need some context on that. I can definitely No 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 shit shit shit. More 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 more. Is 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 James about to like imply that Trump has something to do with this? Hang on. Operation. Um they killed him. Uh that the that wreck was, was staged just like Princess Diana's wreck was staged. What, what do you think, Lauren? Um, do you think there's more to the story? The more reason, just the gold, and maybe one from president, or maybe there's something else. Maybe what? What do you think? I could definitely take a look. Okay. Um, oh, and supposedly, like uh, his son was adopted by the Trump family. Oh, okay. So, so, so the son of the guy that was killed because of the black ops was adopted by the Trump family. So that became our president. And that's Donald so Trump. Okay. Oh. Let me just see. Wait, can you confirm that? A look. Most likely, yes. <laughs> Incredible. Uh, so most likely was that, that Trump is related to Patton. I would say so, yes. Oh, Patton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. And uh, so, 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 uh, Mr. Donald J. Trump is apparently the son of General Patton, who was killed in a black ops uh, assassination. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. Um, so, can you can you look and see what, what what were some of the reasons why they wanted to take Patton out? I mean, we already know about the gold, right? President, what? Anything else? Uh, had kind of a different agenda I'm picking up too, and the wherewithal, the means, and the resources, and most likely connections to be <laughs> problematic to whoever was going to oppose him. That's what I. That's what I think. Amazing. Through, like majestic, he was in opposition to their agenda. I would say so. Yes. Yeah. Incredible. I, I I'm. I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to try and use my powers of remote viewing to see if I can uh, confirm or deny what Lauren's what Lauren's saying. Hang on. Hang on. Here we go. Nah, she's full of shit. Okay. Well, Jimmy, any questions? I, I think if. President Eisenhower, you know, Eisenhower was a general. So if Eisenhower could do it, wh why couldn't Patton be a president? So there may have been uh, some ambition there uh, to run for public office. But I, I do know that he was murdered because of the goad. And I was there at Camp Hero when they sent the divers out to the USS Baldwin to get the goad off goad. that had been found in that mountain. Well, well uh, Jimmy, so if they have time travel, couldn't they just go back in time and stop the Titanic slash Olympic from going out of port and saving the lives of all those people? Whoa, 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 whoa. James, you can't ask a question like that. You can't ask a question like that. That's logical. You can't just do that. Well, hey, if there was this bad thing that happened, but there's time travel, because you're a time traveler, why don't they just go back in time and change it? You can't ask a question like that. What, do you want to get shot? That's crazy. I believe they can, but we have a, it's like a, a cookie on the computer that keeps popping back up. And we need a, um, we need to make contact. I, I would need to make contact uh, with uh, Area 51, uh, Creech Air Force Base, or Nellis, probably Creech Air Force Base, and try to get one of the extraterrestrials to uh, give us some assistance. Um, but we never should have started tinkering with time. Okay, okay, okay. There's a lot that just happened there. Um, so uh, we could, but it's like a cookie on your computer that keeps popping up. That's not what a cookie is. Um, and you'd have to go and, and enlist the aid of aliens in order to travel through time. Okay, 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 all right. And uh, I wasn't the first one that tinkered with it. Um, but once I got involved in it, um, I, I learned that it's best not to, to tinker. Uh, it's best to observe. But we, had, we definitely had a split uh -huh. at Camp Hero. We had some guys that wanted to just learn and prevent tragedies. Then we had other guys that... <laughs> this is why I use Time Block Plus. That's good. That's good. Had Were ambitious. Yeah. That were in it for political reasons. And none of your elected presidents have... have all your presidents were picked. They're not... They're, it may seem like you have an election, but it's, it's all staged. What do you think about that, uh, Lauren? Uh, all presidents selected? Yes. Um, I just want to comment on uh, the time travel technology. Yeah, um, do it. Usually uh, when a species that's spacefaring uh, has reached a high level of spiritual evolution, they not only are able to travel in space, but also time. Mm. And um, they do that for learning and evolutionary purpose. Mm. However, when 
that type of technology falls into malevolent hands Mm. uh, and they start using it to control evolution and consciousness and just get their own way, that's when there's ruptures in the space-time continuum, there's Mandela effects, there's portals to lower astral realms that are opened up, and it actually harms the rest of the multiverse. So uh, that's what happens when that technology falls into the wrong hands. Seems like we need some time cops out there. Do you think time cops are... (laughs) <laughs> I think there might be some time cops from a time corporation. God, please let one of them say yes. Please. I I need I need uh in in the wingnut cannon there to be some Jean-Claude Van Damme and a mullet. Uh <laughs> uh I want to see if I can find the amazing picture uh time cop splits. Where ah uh, man there's no easy picture of it, but god damn, it's a... Oh, no, 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 wait. Yeah, 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 Jesus Christ. Nobody has ever looked more masculine than this. This is just... We need this. The world needs this. It needs time cops. It needs time cops. It needs time cops in boxer shorts doing the splits with a sweet fucking mullet. God damn. Damn, we need that. Fuck me. Ugh. Hey, Jeff. Lovely to catch you right. Just passed my university entry exams. Woo! My future is looking better. I'm worried for my LGBT plus friends in the USA, but I am hopeful things can get better. Trans rights. Trans rights. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Uh, look, if there's one thing that I can say, well, first of all, congratulations. That's incredible. Also, thank you very much for using Streamlabs. It means Google's not stealing your damn money. Uh, and uh, the one thing that you do have to keep in mind, it's true there's lots of bad things that are happening out there, legislation, people trying to, like, push people uh, out of their their rights and, like, their place in society. But keep in mind, even with all the awful, awful stuff that's been going on lately... We're still better off than we were 20 years ago. And 20 years ago, we were way better than we were 20 years prior, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so we are still more or less going in the right direction with a lot of people trying to push us back. But, you know, it, it is it is what it is. Uh, so stay vigilant. Uh, hold your friends and family close. And uh, that's all I can say. Thank you very much for the, uh, the, the dono there. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Anyway, what were we talking about? Uh, God, I'm just mesmerized by it. I don't, I don't think there's ever been a better moment in cinema than this right here. All right, anyway, moving on, moving on. We got to... Okay. I am going to... I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to theorize here. Lauren doesn't know much about time cops, but Jimmy Payne is a time cop. That's what I'm going to... That's, that's, that's what I'm, I'm predicting here. He did the splits in Cyborg as well. He did the splits in all of his movies, but none of the splits, none of the splits in any of his other movies were as sweet as that split. That split is the best split. The best. Followed up by the one in Bloodsport where he did the splits and then punched a dude right in the balls. That was pretty good too. Moving on. Um, I I do know that they're, they are out there. Um, however, oh. they're policing their own timeline that they want to see manifested in anything or anyone that opposes that agenda that they have, uh, they go and stop them. Ah. So I'm under the impression that uh, there, there are time cops, yes, but they're, they're monitoring for ripples and nexus points that don't go along with their agenda, and then they try... Stop in the name of time. <laughs> ...and squash those <laughs> events so that they don't become event horizons on the timelines that they never want to see manifested. Right, like in uh, the new uh, the lo- new Loki show, or they talk about yeah saving the space time continuum. TVA, so, uh, blah blah. What do, what do you think, um, Jimmy? Uh, do you think uh, there's an organization called Time Corp, and uh, have you ever encountered them? Time Core. It would be Time Core, not Time Corp. 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 Because um, I had one guest on the show said that. Uh, Whenever uh, like different time travel groups all wanted to get a hold of one thing, usually time corp wins. So, what any, any well, comment? the f- first of all, the show Loopers is is very true. <laughs> whoever, whoever, 
<laughs> wrote the script had some inside knowledge. So the show, the movie Loopers, is is, is very very real. It, it's just Looper. I, at least I think. Is there a show? Is there? Hang on. No, it's just Looper. It's just Looper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just Looper. The it was a uh, 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 Joseph Gordon-Levitt and Bruce Willis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sure. Um, right. Fuck it. Now, um, it, it, as far as, and I'm going to disagree with Lorian uh, on one Lorian. thing. I met Obama while he was still in diapers. Okay. And I had one of the MIBs. To oh, boy. Oh, she gave us quite the eye roll in that one. Hang on, hang on. We, we got to get the eye roll. We have to point this out. Orion, uh, on one thing. I met Obama while he was still in diapers. And I... Had Boom. Ugh. Wow. Wow. Oh, man. She... Uh, she she, I felt like her eyes were about to roll right out of her fucking skull on that one. And my soundboard is being a bit... Obamna! There we go. Yep, he met baby Obamna. Baby Obamna! She's like, yeah, sure, whatever. I mean, listen, there are time cops and interdimensional portals and demons ripping holes in our universe and CERN causing all of reality to warp, but you met baby Obama? Sure, Jan, sure. Whatever you say. What an idiot. I had one of the MIBs tell me, he says, you know what you're looking at there? And I asked him, I said, what? He said, he's going to be your, he's going to be a president one day. So they knew, I, I knew that back when he was in diapers. I knew his mother, Stanley Ann. I knew his granddaddy. So, so is he a natural born citizen? Uh, no, he's, he's from Kenya. Ah. Um, ah, his um Frank Davis is his daddy. Um what? And um so he was picked. <coughs> he was hand picked. Yeah, yeah. Um what was the other part of your question, James? <laughs> well, if he's if he's not a natural born citizen, is he no, I'm, I'm talking about the original question. Oh, I don't know. I'm I'm too tired even. Maybe Lauren might remember. Lauren, why you? If all the presidents were selected. Oh yeah. So so yeah. Oh, yeah. Jimmy, I, was, they, I was saying yes. They they probably would have some more. Um, they probably know like the the children. You know, they're still falling around even today. Mm -hmm. the future, our future mm -hmm. presidents, right? Well, Jimmy? I, I, I do think that another timeline did interfere with pre with, with with Trump. Okay. Now, okay. Okay. But okay. I, but uh. All the current, all the past presidents, that was planned on, on, that was planned here now. Uh huh. Whoever interfered with Trump came from another timeline. Oh. Um, now Trump's uncle, uh, he went into a Nikola Tesla's uh, apartment. <laughs> <laughs> Nikola Nikola Tesla, that good old Nikola Tesla. Jesus fuck, dude. Oh my god. And got the paperwork. Uh huh. And I do know that uh, Tesla, and I've met Tesla. Oh, did you meet Tesla? You met Tesla. Okay. Uh, jeez, that's uh, that's pretty impressive. Uh, when did Tesla die? 1943. He died in 1943. Must have been on a time traveling uh, mission. That's what I'm assuming. Nikola Tesla. Um, and uh, te you know what? Before we get into him talking to Nikola Nikola Tesla, Nikola Tes Nikola Tesla, uh, we're I, I'm gonna actually go use the bathroom <laughs> really quick. Uh, yeah. I I I I need to do it. I uh I'm I'm having uh I'm having some some issues here. I gotta pee. I'll pee. I will be right back. Uh do I have my be right back thing open? Oh usually I have it like this. Boom! 
Be right back. Gotta pee. I'll be uh, like 90 seconds. There we go. We're back. We're back, baby. We're back. Okay, my friends. Another shocker du jour. Shocker du jour. Shocker du jour. How are we feeling? Are we having a good time? I'm uh, I'm so pumped. I'm so pumped. Bro, I'm so pumped, bro. It's good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, I, they don't even know what they're talking about. Well, how do you know? How do you know? There, I, have you traveled through time? Hmm? Hmm? He was, uh, mad when he heard about how Ederson ripped off Tesla. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did he say why he disagreed with Lauren? Um, I, kind, kind of, kind of, I guess. Can we get a movie about Trump as a time traveler trying to be president and messing up the timeline? That would be great. That would be awesome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm super into it. It's a good day. Wing nuts and new comic book day. Hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah. Uh, uh. <laughs> I just joined the stream and took an edible. Can't wait to see how crazy things will be. Oh. Oh, buckle up. Buckle up. Oh boy. Yeah, I had to refill my, my coffee in my amazing Big Trouble in Little China mug. It's beautiful. One of the best movies ever made. All right. Let's uh let's let's do it. He's gonna tell us all about when he met Nikola Te Nikolai Tesla. Tesla definitely worked on the uh the Eldridge. So okay. Yolanda King, um, Ann Coulter, Coulter, um, Alex Jones. Um, uh, this is from Michael McIntosh. Michael McIntosh in 2028, Andrew Basaggio in 2036, um, Arnold Schwarzenegger in 2044. Apparently he was born in the United States when we occupied Germany. So, um, so let's see here we have. Hold on, guys. I got so many windows open. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, so what, what do you think about that? Uh, sure. Surely do you, do any of those names ring a bell? Like, the, you think any of those people will be our, our future president? Uh, are you asking me? Yeah, or... sure. Sure. What do you think? <laughs> James, uh, I can only tell you up, up to the point that, you know, it all fell apart at Camp Hero now. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, we're going to have an event in the future where nuclear uh, missiles are going to go off. Okay. okay. And um, a lot of people are going to die. Ah. Uh, and um, that'll be sad. The population of Earth. Population of Earth is going to get down to as low as 145 million, and it and it stabilizes about at that level, then it builds back up to about five million. So there's not going to be any. Wait, wake up, sheeple! <laughs> Didn't he say a uh, hundred and forty-five million, and then it'll go back up to five million? Wait, what? And yeah, I think uh, I think maybe maybe he did recently watch the. Oh wait, no, you know what? I think this came out before the Fallout series uh, debuted. I'm pretty sure. I think this interview came out about a week before that so he wasn't inspired by fallout wasn't inspired by fallout but by the way if you haven't seen the new fallout tv show you need to go watch it you need to keep watching this stream finish this stream then go watch it go watch it like memory my wife has never played the games 
and she loved it. Loved it. I played all the games. Like I, I started with Fallout 1 when it first came out, and I adore it. I absolutely adore it. It's great. Anyway, moving on. Let's go. There's not going to be a United States in the future. There's not going to be uh, China or Russia. No superpowers are going to survive this. Yeah. So I know. Thank you for sharing that, Jimmy. I know you, we've talked about it before. So even like Al Bay, like he said that when he went to the future, 800 years in the future, right? The, uh, the, he went into historical archives and he uh, found out that there was some kind of virus that caused uh, women to become um, sterile in the late uh, 1990s. And then the po world population dropped off. So, so uh, um, it didn't look like there was any kind of nuclear war in that particular scenario. So maybe th that's just the movie Children of Men. Also, really good watch. Uh, watch Fringe too. I am currently watching Fringe. I'm on. I think me and Mems are on season four, three, three, maybe three. I don't know. That's one of those cookies and Montauk where they're always trying to reset things. So, I mean, could it be possible? How about, let's ask the question to Lauren. So, um, um, looking down the multiverse, I know, of course, Jimmy, you've been in the future from what the 19, early 1980s when you were, when you were there at Montauk with Hillary Clinton and she was witnessing the Eldridge return back in 84. Right. Um, so do you think, was that 83? Um, so I'm taking these numbers right <laughs> so go ahead, Lauren. What, what do you think? Uh, can we change the future? Is it set in stone? Well, uh, what we're seeing right now is a timeline and temporal war. Um, there's a lot of different malevolent extraterrestrial species that are vying for position on the planet. Their ultimate goal is to rule, uh, rule uh, openly on the surface, whereas like humanity is enslaved under mind control. Um, I think that the malevolent extraterrestrials absolutely do want a nuclear global war, mm. uh, in which case uh, it'll harm the population. It'll make the surface world completely unlivable and more uh, more hospitable to them. Uh, I also do know as well that they've been trying to uh, covertly uh, destroy human relationships and the natural process of reproduction by pitting men and women against one another by encouraging people to have children, you know, by inorganic means, uh, that type of thing. And it, it's all it's all part of the same uh, agenda. Just you wait, ladies. As soon as we have artificial wombs, you're out. You're out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. We're all going to be super gay. I mean, I mean, maybe, you know, whatever. It's fine. And uh, program because this is actually causing to uh, affect the galactic law and protocol, which basically states that uh, a planet uh, that doesn't have a native species anymore, that is no longer in occupancy, it opens up uh, for other extraterrestrial races to come in sure. and, and have ownership and property rights. So that's also why uh, these malevolent ETs are not only hu uh, utilizing humanity for illegal hybridization, the galactic slave trade, uh, trying to, you know, uh, so shorten the the human lifespan also to control reproduction their ultimate goal is property and territory rights because a lot of these malevolent uh extraterrestrials are into conquests and territory and property rights what do you mean property rights i think she was she was saying something about that too like uh it, it, something about like the, in the last time the last stream and also if you didn't see part one of this stream that we did a week ago you should go watch it because it's still it's a banger uh this whole thing is just so fun but she was like, you know, this illegal hybridization and shit. Well, illegal for who? What court are you talking about? And now she's talking about property rights? Property rights? Like, are you... I, I'm assuming she's got to be some form of, like, sovereign citizen or something or, like, whatever. Only people so poisoned by these types of ideas that they, they feel like... Malevolent ET. <laughs> <laughs> hell of a place to enter lol thank hell you're online jeff yeah gotta keep the malevolent tts away that's right ha, 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 ha. that's right absolutely right thank you so much mickey good to see you hell yeah that's so that's so damn funny oh my god that's so great and they absolutely want the planet for themselves and part of the the scenario the global scenario that they want to see uh happen uh -huh. is some type of nuclear exchange uh so that the human uh, population will have to be forced underground. Mostly. Okay. And what about a, uh, so do you, are you likely, do you likely see a, a, I know you say nuclear. So does that mean it's a, is it an EMP 
type scenario, maybe a high altitude nuclear explosion that blows out all the electrical grid or what, what, what are you, what do you think is going to happen? Uh, I do foresee that there is a high probability of a attack on the U on U S uh, very, that's very imminent. Uh, they intend, it's going to be like a high altitude EMP that they intend to uh, knock mm. out communications and mm. there, there's probably going to be service disruptions, no, no internet that will, most likely uh, want to, they'll want to bring in some type of quarantine. So uh, they're trying to, they're really trying to weaken the United States right now. <laughs> Absolutely. In every way, shape and form. Us specifically, because I live here and because it's important and it affects me. Jesus Christ. Why do you say EMP like that? I don't know. James, and what's so weird is that James, I, I, I've tried to understand what kind of a person he is for a really long time, but he both, looks like things are terrible and then like in an instant we'll be like yeah it's so interesting and so exciting and i i just don't even know like where he stands on a lot of this stuff is he worried about it or is he like excited by it it's very strange possible and so when that, that particular scenario happens what's going to happen with like so we have oh i know jimmy we were talking about this how many illegal uh, people i wouldn't even call them yeah citizens are just um illegal so how many are there in the united states now timmy it's Keep it's estimated 15 percent of the population okay no wow but <laughs> wow now that's just an estimate it's still going on so it could be more than that okay as we get closer to the election okay uh, now, when I worked with John Titter, there was social unrest in the southeast United States, uh -huh. southwest United States. Uh -huh. and from, uh, from the invasion? Yeah. Invasion. We're bickering amongst ourselves. And what happened is, once we go to fight amongst ourselves, the Russians, you know, you know, nobody has control of the nuclear weapons. Nobody? So Korea, North Korea, is going to fire the missile off first. Okay. Uh, At us? One of the missiles is going to get past us. It's going to hit Canada. With okay. For, we have to... Yeah, John John Teeter was proven to be a host. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, but that doesn't that doesn't matter. Uh, it like <laughs> we actually you don't know. Um, North Korea can barely barely get a missile like three hundred miles. The idea that they're somehow going to get an ICBM all the way to the west coast of North America very very doubtful. But makes for very entertaining content. Go ahead where the tar sands are at. And once those tar sands get to burning, you can't put them out. Um. And so you have burning radioactive oil that gets up in the stratosphere. Yeah. Okay, now when that burning radioactive oil gets up in the stratosphere, it's going to come down all across the world. And... The filters, the uh, air mass that you that you wear, cannot filter out oil. Oil. And they're going to clog up. So just because you you wear a respirator or you have underground base, that underground base, you know, they have to have a pipe that comes up, uh -huh. to suck down fresh air. And um, so that's going to get, you know, contaminated. Uh -huh. so they're not going to be able to hide underground. Well, yes and no. I mean, you know, submarines can make their own air. Uh, what about filters? Like, <laughs> why not filters, Jimmy? But not all those bases can do that. I mean, submarines got seawater they can use. Yeah. What do you do if you're in a desert? You know, in the West United States, where there's very little water. Yeah. See, basically, once you get those people in the base, it's just like a, it's just like a feeding pen for these reptilians. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 sure. 
Also, I do have to point this out uh, because before we get, I listen. I <laughs> feeding pen for the reptilians, but uh, this really does need to be pointed out. Uh, submarines cannot make their own oxygen or their own air. They can make oxygen, I suppose, but they can't make their own air from seawater. We don't breathe pure oxygen. We can't breathe pure oxygen. We breathe more nitrogen than anything else. There's a lot of shit in the air. A lot. It's not just oxygen. And I don't think that Jimmy knows this. I don't think he has any idea. That's so crazy. Use a chemical reaction to create oxygen on board. Yeah, but they can't you can't just like replace the air, the atmosphere inside of a submarine with oxygen. It won't fucking work. You can't breathe pure oxygen. You'll die. You'll die. <laughs> you can't just do that. <laughs> Uh, there's a lot of people that are being... Abducted. I mean, I guess maybe they can like use like uh, recirculation systems where they like uh, scrub the air of carbon dioxide, refresh it or something. Like, I suppose, maybe, I don't know. But I... If... It right now, um, coming across the border. I'm going to look at that. Uh, every year you have 100,000 people that come up missing. Every year, a hundred thousand. Now they do find people, but every year, a hundred thousand. Now that's just the United States. How many are coming up missing in South America? Oh, interesting. Or, or in Africa or in Europe. So we have no actual figures of where these people are going. And and some of these and these it seems like these people are already, uh, already have plans of where they're supposed to be. To, to maybe tar uh, how about the, you lauren you want to comment about that uh, let, what, what do you think these illegals are doing let, let me finish oh okay okay the, Jimmy. there's these people being brought down those underground bases as a food source go ahead <laughs> uh she seems so defeated okay 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 so i'm looking it up and apparently they can do their own form of, uh, what is it called? Electrolysis? Something? To uh, recirculate. Yeah, electrolysis to recirculate the air. Uh, it looks like how they have to do it is they have to scrub the carbon dioxide from the air. They then also have to reduce all the moisture that has been exhaled in the air. And because the oxygen itself, we consume and breathe out carbon dioxide, they scrub the carbon dioxide, discard it, and then can make new oxygen to replenish that part of our atmosphere. Okay, that's fair. That's totally fair. Huh. Interesting. Well, fuck me dead. I guess Jimmy Payne was right and I was wrong. I hope I never have to say that again in my fucking life. Oh, boy. Um. Well, it's, it's of my opinion uh, that there are certain individuals that are being positioned um, in the United States and it's to uh, formulate an attack on American soil. Um, and I believe that some of them are uh, reptilian, uh, reptilian hybrids. And there's different competing groups that represent the different competing extraterrestrial races that want dominance over the planet. Okay. So basically to paint a, a greater picture is we have a bunch of malevolent extraterrestrial galactic slave traders that are currently in illegal occupation on a planet. Again, that was I... and is, you know, in actuality, the property of the uh, Galactic Federation and humanity are, are under their protection. OK, then call the cops. If it's illegal, then then call the cops. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Watch it five years. Jimmy is telling the truth. I know, dude, I know. And um, they are actually trying to take down uh, the country that poses the, the greatest threat to their agenda, which is why they're attacking the United States uh, so much. So that's why they're trying to uh, uh, dismantle the infrastructure. They're trying to cause social unrest. Mm. Um, they're trying to pit, you know, human uh, 
men and women against one another. Uh, there's there's inflation, so there's all these problems. On top of the fact that there is nanos that are being uh, released into the air uh, via the chemtrails, and it's in the food and the water and the air supply that are actually getting inside people's bodies. And chemtrails, chemtrails. Okay, sure, fuck it. And they are actually mind controlling people covertly right now. Uh, in order to control human consciousness and uh, make people more docile, apathetic, uh, depressed. Um, and it's actually being done covertly. And a lot of people are not aware of these things. And it's it's all part of a greater agenda uh, to weaken humanity mm. and um, try and take over. And you do you see something happening with this eclipse coming up um, tomorrow for, you know, Hopefully, you know, in the future, people are watching this years now, like, oh, well, it's not, don't worry, but no big deal. It would have all blew over, but maybe, maybe that's what it is. So tell us what, what do you think is going to happen? Do you see, do you see a, a virus or something or nanos? Well, the potential for a false flag is um, the threat is extraordinarily high. So I would recommend that anyone uh, listening to this broadcast uh, take heed and, uh, you know, just be prepared uh, to have, um, you know, extra food and water at home, to have, um, uh, basically, uh, camping gear, uh, a first aid kit. Okay, but why do you have? Okay, okay, okay. So uh, this is this is a really interesting part about the whole conspiracy brain. It's not that hey, I think there's going to be a catastrophe or a disaster or an attack. It's not that. Like she's not warning us of those things. It's she's warning that there's going to be a false flag. Like it, in her brain. It is more important to point out that it is an orchestrated whatever rather than that there might be a catastrophe, whether manufactured or not. It's so fucking weird. It's so fucking weird. So weird. But I guess we have to, like, we got to become preppers now. Uh, let's see. What are her uh, What are her tips? I want to get, get all the tips. I'm going to take down notes. Um the threat is extraordinarily high. So I would recommend that anyone uh, listening to this broadcast uh, take heed and, uh, you know, just be prepared uh, to have, um, you know, extra food and water at home, to have um, uh, basically uh, camping gear, uh, a first aid kit, camping gear. that type of thing. And to just stay, stay very, very calm and just be aware that the potential for, you know, uh, some type of false flag event is extraordinarily high mm. uh, to be extraordinarily cautious if they're going to uh, decide to travel around those dates. Uh, that's also like uh, to be, you know, uh, people should be aware of that. Now, when it comes to what I actually foresee happening, I can yeah. tell you what they were planning on, uh, like what type of uh, scenario and type of, uh, you know, event that they wanted um, is was a some type of blackout where they would quarantine most of the United States. Uh, that there would be communication issues, that the internet would go down, that no one had would have access to, you know, their banking or what that type of thing, that they could, you know, that that the okay. I do have to point out something. Like I, for the most part, this is pretty basic prepper stuff. You know, they might knock out the power. Okay, knock down communications. Okay, uh, yeah, I, I, that, that, sure, I suppose. But she said like that they might try and quarantine the greater America, you know, United States of America, that won't work. That won't work. There's no way that that would work. There, I mean, we, we have shown that there are plenty of people. You just cannot control their movement whatsoever. They will go absolutely ballistic and apeshit. They'll throw a fucking barbecue. They'll throw a barbecue. Like, we had a global pandemic, and you had people licking doorknobs and shit, like, just in protest. Oh, yeah, oh, fucking virus. <laughs> No, 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 no. Quarantine? No, nah, it never happened. Sorry. The National Guard would be called in and that some type of bioweapon that is currently uh, dormant inside of people that are vaccinated <laughs> would be unleashed and they would cause some type of reaction like uh, the Marburg virus because, as I said, like the Anunnaki <laughs> that are part of this whole greater agenda are into uh, enslaving humanity and traumatizing everybody. And they wanted it to be some type of blood sacrifice. Ah, uh, so blood hence, sacrifice. You know, Marburg is... is uh, an illness in which a person has hemorrhagic fever and they bleed from, you know, every orifice. And it's actually quite, it's actually quite horrible uh, at the same time that they wanted to open the portal and unleash the demons. So it kind of paints like a very nightmarish picture that was being done on purpose. The yeah. fact that the epicenter they were intending to, for it to be on, at, in Texas, because for them, they represent a very strong population who are very righteous, who, um, you know, are very moral uh, and they're, they're, they're very, very strong people. Uh, so are, are so they are Americans. So like, you know, I'm.
She's talking about anti-vaxxers. Like, <laughs> they're very moral, are they? They're very moral. Very strong people. Very moral, very strong people. I, it's not like I had to deal with two years of people shrieking about how asking them to wear a mask is, is, a, is akin to a hate crime. <laughs> like, no, I'm sorry. Anti-vaxxers are the most uh, limp dick, cowardly, fearful fucking people. No, 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 no. Absolute cowardice. Completely fucking weak. Nah, dude. Shut the fuck up. I'm talking in general. You know, they represent liberty and freedom. So ha! that's why there's so many attacks going on uh, right, right now. Now, what I foresee happening mm. and what's actually going to happen because so many prayers and good intentions were actually put against those malevolent agendas. Uh, for instance, that the portal wouldn't open, the portal to hell wouldn't open. All of the malevolent entities would actually be teleported to another universe and actually shut uh, somewhere in the lower astral realm. So nothing. Oh, our prayer guys, our prayers have, have the power of our prayers have taken those demons and shunted them into a lower dimension. Amazing. Amazing. That's incredible. Yeah, look, dude, that's what I was telling you. That like Jimmy is out there and she like rolls her eyes like, oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You saw baby Obama. Obama. And like, but then she opens her mouth and she is fucking batshit. She is batshit insane. What the fuck? Do we know what Jimmy Payne looks like? No, we don't. I've never seen a picture of him. I think it's going to be unleashed. Um, on top of the fact that whatever bioweapon that they would release, that it wouldn't work. And that those people that were innocent and being targeted are going to be okay. So that's what I foresee happening. It's, it's hopefully going to be, you know, uh, a non-event. It's just going to be like a dud for the bad guys and that we can continue uh, moving forward on very positive timelines. Wow, thank you. Um, hold on. Hold on your thoughts, Jimmy. Hold on. I, uh, this was uh, written, recorded back in 2021 so um this was from a six-year-old child that my a friend of mine um had contact with who was uh very gifted so this boy said that um let me go on here uh he, he said biden isn't the president neither is trump he said the andromedans are running america and trump is just an actor they're doing wow that six-year-old sounds like a fucking idiot doing the whole earth alliance thing he said a third strand of COVID is coming soon, a new version of avian flu coming out of Ethiopia, uh, being transported by someone from Ethiopia. Mm. It's brought to us and developed at Fort Detrick. There's, there was a shooting at Fort Detrick, and that shooter was Ethiopian. South Korea has... Isn't it interesting how no viruses can ever originate from the United States? Isn't it interesting? Isn't it interesting how that happens? It's always got to be somewhere else, like China... Uh, Ethiopia, whatever. Um, except the Spanish flu didn't come from Spain. It came from Kansas. Just just putting that out there. But it is weird how uh, this virus definitely has to come from Ethiopia. Okay. That's the antidote. Cure is solution is ejection to spinal cord. Name of the virus is project number PP4. F5 something. 55 million people are going to die from the vaccine um, of this flu will die in the USA. I'm not sure if that was the first, I guess that was the first COVID one. 55 million are supposed to die. So we, I think what I said, only like two or 3 million have died so far. Um, and it, uh, there will be a third round of shots. People will get the third shot or are dead. The CDC calls them the living dead, death rattle, death phlegm cough. There's also five. Keep in mind what he's reading right now is a prophecy written three years ago by a six year old, or at least that's what he claims, you know. <laughs> uh, the Spanish flu became known as that because Spain were taking loud, aggressive measures, so they, un so they ironically became known for it. That's true. That's absolutely true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they were the first, the first country to really start taking it serious. And all the other countries around them were like, well, we're not really having a problem as people are fucking dropping dead. <laughs> they got named the Spanish flu because they actually gave a shit about it. It's so fucking weird. It's so weird. Why are we listening to a six-year-old? I don't know. I don't know. 
fires in the ocean. They are shooting water in the fires to try to put them out. They can't because they opened up portals to hell. Um, people are attacking others on airplanes. Chaos. That's actually kind of interesting. Remember that girl, that's, that woman that says that person isn't real? Does anybody remember that, Lauren? Mm-hmm. Did you ever remote view that? What what does she actually see? Um, I I could remote view it. Um, she probably saw an alien, uh, some type of malevolent extraterrestrial. If I had okay. to guess, like, <laughs> I mean, I can if you want me to. I mean, I mean, I can definitely take a look. Um, Let's see. Most likely, some type of shapeshifter. Ah, she saw a shapeshifter. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. It's awesome. It's, uh, mm. yep. 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 That was a fight with her family, wasn't it? I I think it was. Yeah, it was something like that. I, I can't remember. It <laughs> doesn't matter. Didn't we already get the third shot? Nothing happened. Well, I'm not really sure if the, 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 the child prophecy was about what already happened or like if it's supposed to be a new virus, the one coming from Ethiopia, and then they're going to make another uh vaccine and like all this and all that or blah 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 who knows it's uh, that um uh, that she had that type of, right yeah most likely because yeah. mm -hmm. the conventional uh, uh veil is thinning so here's a picture right here the ocean's on fire gas leak from underground pipelines can you can you remote view into that fire is that is that actually from a natural gas leak that caught on fire or is that something even more it's some type of other device that's opening another portal Ah, it's a portal. Okay, okay. What is this one from? I'm trying to s to see what website they're trying to want. Oh, this is from CNET. Oh, okay. So that's probably like a hell realm. It's not organic. the The article says the fire has been extinguished. Whatever. Fuck it. Fuck it. Yeah, some uh, lower astral, lower astral realm. Um, yeah. It the it's very chaotic in those realms. It's very dense, very heavy. And anytime that there's a portal aperture that's opened that links it to our world, it actually causes a great deal of physical damage to our dimension as well. Interesting. Well, you can see it's right near like a, some kind of oil rig. I guess maybe they were conducting an experiment there that went wrong, possibly. Mm-hmm. 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 Well. Okay. Well, Riveting stuff. We'll just move on then. Yeah. Okay. Done on purpose. Okay. Uh, after the third vaccine, um, let's see here. Uh, they will have a patent number. For okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can see the fucking plat. Yeah, there's a, f <laughs> there's a fucking drilling platform right next to it. No, 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 no. That's not what it is. That's not what it is. It, 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 it's a, it's a portal. It's a fucking portal. Okay. It's a portal. Oh, the fire was not extinguished. The portal was closed. My bad. Excuse me. Excuse me. Oh, my God. <laughs> Hold on a second. A third wave will be called PF something. It'll be delivered by CRISPR. Um, something about the Zimbabwe notes. Probably should get some. Okay. Uh, oh, here's another one. They're going to use dirty bombs and briefcases on trailers. Uh, China wants access to Wall Street and Silicon Valley. Dirty bombs will start um, when they release the avian flu. New York City is going to be nuked. California, third city, either D.C. or Detroit. China wants access to... I already said that. Okay, it said that. Um, okay, that's that's all I got about that one. Anybody mm. want to comment about that? Um, there's certainly, there's certainly um, targets that, you know, the malevolent forces that are currently uh, in the United States, they're most likely covert uh, sleeper cells or just lying in wait. That um, I did do some research on it. Uh, recently, and that they would be targeting uh, critical infrastructure. They would be uh, targeting power stations, potentially military bases as well, um, and trying to just uh, just cause more damage. Also, uh, any types of factories and also food processing plants, because they're mm -hmm. trying to just mm -hmm. uh, cut off the United States from the rest of the world and from getting any aid to just kind of send them back into the dark ages. That's what they're that's what they're intending. Thank you. How about how about Jimmy? Uh, what do you think? Do you think uh, New York City will be a, a, a thriving a rebuild. All of Lauren's remote viewings are so uncertain. It's maybe an alien in human disguise, like probably. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's uh, it, it's there's it, there's nothing really there that's uh definitive. You know, it's it's pretty wild. It's pretty damn wild. 
Uh, I'm trying to find... Where is that goddamn movie? Hang on, hang on, hang on. This is important. Damn it. Is it, is there, is, hang on, hang on. Is it that one? I think it might be this one. Damn it. What the fuck? Anyway, somebody's asking what's CRISPR, and I was trying to make a joke that it's a movie. Uh, but I can't find the IMDb for that movie, CRISPR, which a certain friend of mine may or may not have had something to do with the, the making of. And uh, it may or may not be one of the worst things I've ever seen in my fucking life. Oh, wait. Oh, shit. I spelled it wrong because the movie is actually may, is spelled with a K, which is very funny. Yeah. This movie, CRISPR. That's what that, they're referring to the movie CRISPR. Yep. Yep. Definitely, definitely not the genetic engineering technique. Um, go watch CRISPR. Or don't. <laughs> it's very bad. It's very, very bad. When Dr. Elijah Roloff brings his lab creation home for Christmas, a world of envy and horror is unleashed upon his unsuspecting family. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. <clears throat> a thriving place when, you're, when you were in the future? No. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm gonna have to back it up for a second. Uh, I do, I do like how Lawrence is very uncertain. You know, like James is asking her very, very pointed questions of like, okay, so can you remote view into that and tell us whether or not this? And it's a specific question. She's like, eh. I mean, it's definitely like in that category, but eh, you know. And if send them back into the dark ages. That's what they're. That's what they're intending. All right, here we go. Thank you. How about how about Jimmy? Uh, what do you think? Do you think uh, New York City will be a, a, a thriving, a rebuilt, and re a thriving place when you're when you were in the future? No. Oh, what, no. Is it, what, what does it look like? It's just like in the movie Planet of the Apes. <laughs> That's what I saw. Oh, Lauren just sighed so big. Oh fuck! Leveled on the ground. Yeah, and the the. The the night though Nike base is is where they enter at on, on Long Island. Okay. Okay. Well, let's do this. We, this is the last thing on our notes, and I get we I guess we could probably call it a night if you want to. Um, NASA to launch sounding rockets into moon shadow during the solar eclipse. Okay. So what do you what do you think about this? What are they? Um, here's a conceptual animation. Well, obviously, that's yeah, not working. But... Oh, here's another animation. So, what? Tell us, what do you think is going on here? What? Um, is this uh, some? Is this some kind of scientific experiment? You know, the NASA is just doing some humanitarian work for us, or, or is there another agenda behind all this? Um, I think I think it's an ode to you know the the crazy alien. Uh, people that they they really like and worship and i i wouldn't be surprised if there was some type of payload w within them that probably has some kind of weapon like bioweapon or that type of thing that they're going to release in the upper atmosphere that takes a few days to incubate uh which, which will then like probably cause people to you know not feel so great uh, i wouldn't be surprised because um... why what's the point why in the fuck would nasa or anybody be like you know what we're gonna do we're going to fire a rocket into the atmosphere to make people feel kind of not great. I think it's probably because Lauren just generally feels kind of not great. And there has to be an explanation for it. Not that she's, I don't know, sedentary or has a shit diet or maybe some chronic health issues or whatever. It's got to be that NASA shot a fucking rocket up with a bioweapon to make her tummy hurt or something. Like, what the fuck, dude? What the fuck? Why would anybody spend all that money to make people just feel kind of, eh, they don't feel great? Um, the people that are launching those rockets, they, they work very closely with the malevolent extraterrestrial groups. And it's, it's, they like to time things with different astronomical events. And it's, they're all very, you know, religious about it and just very crazy about it. And that's most likely their, their real agenda and what they're going to do. And they want, they want us to bleed. Yes. <sighs> So like we have the red heifer, right? So it's it's not 
because of the stated purpose of just like doing some rocket testing and stuff like that, you know, just to study some quick stuff and test like reusable rockets or whatever, blah, 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 blah. No, it's because they want to hurt us. What the fuck, man? Um, the, the, the Marburg virus, which causes you to bleed, right? To have a death, death rattle cough. Uh, what else? Any, what, any other connections of anything else bleeding? Um, um, I, I also picked up that uh, whatever bioweapon pathogen that uh, is going to be released is going to mimic uh, some type of like death virus, like a flesh eating disease oh. uh, that, that they intend to. to use. Well, I, I have great news for you. None of that happened because uh, that, that was like eight days ago. And uh, you said oh, it's going to be a few days later. We we're going to get some some kind of effect. We're all fine. And um, it's a particular blood group as well that they're they're targeting in the United States as well. That uh. I, I happen. I, I think that they're targeting particularly the RH negatives. Um, and, you know, that's because it's, it's uh. very much a blood war with the Anunnaki. A blood. Oh, it's a blood war with the Anunnaki. It's a blood war. With the fucking Anunnaki. Good lord. Good lord. <laughs> Did he just say death rattle cock? Good name for a band. That's true. Blood war with the Anunnaki. Amazing. Amazing. Jesus Christ. They're going to kill them off? Um, they, they want them to suffer. And when I say they, the, the, the Anunnaki actually uh, want a certain group to, to suffer because... Currently, they're they're at war. The different there's a few malevolent extraterrestrial groups that are currently vying for position, and they're aligned with other uh, world governments, and they're all trying to take over territory, and they're just basically taking shots at one another. And humanity, unfortunately, are the innocent victims that are just kind of like in the middle of everything. So, I would highly recommend that again people take heed and you know just take care of themselves and have first aid, uh, first aid kit, no first aid as well. And to just be very cautious and be prepared. Thank you. I it, Again, it's one of those things that I have to... It, it's so crazy. And one of the reasons why Lauren is so shockingly crazy and nuts and, and weird. And I feel bad for her. It's So NASA announces that they're going to they're gonna use sounding rockets. A sounding rocket is what you use when you want to get high enough, but a science balloon can't get there but not so high as satellites because satellites have to be even further out. That that median zone in between where you could get a science balloon and you have the satellites still needs to be studied, and so they use sounding rockets. They go up, they do orbits, and then they come back down, and they're trying to make them as reusable as possible. And it's for measuring shit. It's science experiments and, and, and taking observations and things like that. No, it's a blood war with the Anunnaki, and they're trying to fucking destroy everything, and, and hate, and pain, and fear, and evil. Portals to hell! This woman leads the most miserable life. Nobody in the world has ever been more miserable than this woman right now. Holy shit. What the fuck, dude? All right, Jimmy, what do you think? NASA shooting off rockets... I mean, obviously, they don't even need to do that. They could just deliver the pay payload right out of their, their craft right out of um, Area 51. So tell us, what do you think that's about? Well, there's still a lot of questions about the moon that we don't know about. Okay. Um, the rockets that, that are being shot there, we don't really know what's underneath the soil of, of the moon. It's hollow. It's, I mean, it rings like a bell. Okay. First of all, these rockets are not going to the moon. Jimmy thinks they are because he saw, and it's the same thing these, these three dumb fucks did. They read the headline and didn't read the article. I got the article right here. NASA to launch sounding rockets into moon's shadow during solar eclipse they're not going to the moon they're not going to the moon they're like going to pass through the shadow that it casts but it's a it's a sounding rocket it doesn't go that high but also the moon is hollow and if it's not hollow it should be hollow and if if possible it should be exactly like that movie moonfall 
which is one of the best movies of all time, and you should absolutely watch Moonfall uh, and drink while you do so, because holy shit, is that the most entertaining piece of shit movie I've ever seen. I'm probably actually not that high rated, but I, I really enjoyed it. I've watched it like four or five times now. Moonfall is rad. What a stupid movie. Uh, there are those that believe it's artificial uh, craft. You know, he, he saw it's, Moonfall. It's, it's hollow. He saw like Moonfall. Like a Death Star. So, like a Death Star. The rockets, uh, you know, they're they're going to explode and, um, you know, send shock waves through the um, the planet, and that's going to give a measurement. No. Just like you map uh, the sea floor, you know, um, that's what they're trying to do. Um, if there's you know, that's that's the purpose of it. Uh huh. But you know, you got the the Chinese wanting to build a, a moon base there. Dope. Well, think- supposedly all the the territory on the moon is already claimed by the Dracos. So, uh, mm-hmm. like the Germans, in order to get that treaty, they had to agree to sell off some of their their uh, their best beautiful women every year, and uh, and uh, they they found out what they were doing with those women. It wasn't good. So um, what? What? Yeah, the price they probably have to pay is sell sell out the rest of humanity. Uh, what? <laughs> what? Probably. Well, you know, um, what the fuck? As far as the the uh, the we you know we already have a base on the moon. Ah, it's ah. in one of the dome cities, but. Uh, it, some some type of event occurred, and it cracked all the domes. There's about nine domes uh. on uh, that I know of. Uh. And uh, one, um, well, they were able to repair it, but the problem is, is that there's a lot of radiation even underneath the dome, and there's a lot of uh, bacterial bacteria inside that dome. So, ba- so these, these, okay, fuck. Oh boy. All right. So there, <laughs> you need a drink. I need a drink too. Oh my God. So there are, there are bases, bases on the moon, at least seven domes on the moon, but the domes are full of radiation and bacterial. I can't even say how he, I can't even replicate how he says bacteria. Holy shit. I, mm, mm. Okay, and so obviously, that, so they didn't repair the other domes because they, people died. Too many people were, di- were dying. Rebuilt, there, they weren't people that were in the domes, James. Uh, they were extra uh, tall grays. Tall grays. Uh, now, the um, when I was on was on the moon. Uh, <laughs> you were on the moon. You know, going into the uh, the. the uh, the spacecraft, uh huh, and um, mm. you know where e- Eb Mona Lisa was recovered. That spacecraft is at least four miles long, but there's also two other smaller uh, triangular spacecraft that are in the in the general area. Um, and so I think. Like I said, um, <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ! Well, there's a lot of things we don't know about the moon, <clears throat> but we but we we have a base on the moon right now. We okay, so we don't know a lot about the moon, not because we haven't gone back up there in decades. We have bases on the moon. We just you know, having had bases on it, just haven't learned much about it. And we have bases on the moon, which is why we're shooting rockets into it, which we're not. What? Damn. Um, so, it might be, like I said, um, there's a lot of stuff going on up there. Going on. There's a lot of alien ruins up on the moon. Right, right. 
William Rutledge tr- uh, tried to, um, you know, tell, you know, tell the public. All right. Well, I'll just do this real quick. I know things really real quick. I think here, Jimmy right? needs a nap. Do you guys see that? The Apollo twenty. Oh wait, am I am I muted? No. Oh, I see. Okay. okay. Uh, so yeah. So that is that you, Jimmy, holding the camera? No. Um, I I I was actually with um, Apollo twenty one. And Apollo 21, I came down on the limb. Ah. And uh, just as that is just as she was laying there is when I walked in the door. What? Um, what? Now, what I was going to say was. What the fuck is this? What the fuck is this? I what? Okay, 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 okay. Apollo 20 never happened. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> I, I need to know. I've never seen this before. Uh, what in the fuck is this? No evidence of human remains dubbed Mona Lisa found on the moon. Human remains have never been found on the moon. Uh, users online are sharing a video that allegedly proof a sarcophagus named Mona Lisa was discovered during a moon mission. It appears to originate from a fictional story about Apollo 20 mission, which never happened, uh, created by a French author. Okay. I wonder who made this. That's so interesting. Uh, that's so fucking wild. Speth apparently created the Apollo 20 mission and his findings as a hoax, as in page five of the book he wrote, this story is a fiction. Some public names appear, but many any resemblance of people or situations have existed or occurred. It's purely accidental. Uh, he's continued to state that it's just fiction and he's just goofing off. Uh, okay, okay. That's so crazy. That's so funny. It's just, it's it's like a bullshit intentionally made like fun hoax video. And they're like, oh no, this is definitely very true. And, and Jimmy's like, I was there when they, they had her lying down. The, um, the EB, she's not dead and she's not alive. <laughs> I put my hand on her forehead where she's got her third eye. Oh. And I was able to communicate with her. Oh. And she, she, she's, a, she has, she has. I don't think we'll get in trouble with that because this is quite literally just a fucking wax figure. It's, it's like, this is like a paper mache body somebody made. What the fuck? What the fuck? Two, uh, two jobs. She's a flight pilot but she's also the nurse just in case if he's going to repeat it well not anymore i guess so why, why, why did her crew abandon her she Ugh. okay while he keeps repeating this because i don't want i don't want even though this is obviously like a uh a a, a, a paper mache uh fake body i'm just gonna play it while it's off screen while he's still showing this stupid uh footage you've already seen it but i just don't want to tempt the face of with youtube they didn't abandon it. There was a meteor shower that the spacecraft went through and right about 15, 20 feet past the, the cockpit is where the uh, some of the meters went, the meteorites went through and it damaged some of the hydraulic system on the craft. Okay. Uh, there's a hole up, uh, there's, there's at least one hole the size of a basketball, uh-huh. and I believe that decompressurized the craft. They lost consciousness, cautiousness, and they crashed. Now, yeah, there were okay, okay, okay. So, so there was a. Yeah, this is what I'll do actually, so I don't have to keep messing around with this. Uh, what does this do? Blink, blink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just add something real quick to to put over the screen where where they have it. Um, do to do, do color block. 
They had cautiousness, you know, uh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, sure. Sure, sure, sure. And a crash and all this and all that. All right, here we go. Let's go. For some of the crew members that were able to get their helmets on, she didn't have time to get her helmet on. Okay. Okay. And you have to remember the moon is incredibly cold. Cold. So she's perfectly preserved. Um, she's got a fluid in her that <laughs> is, uh, it's kind of clear, but it's got a yellow tint to it. Uh huh. And, but you can put, you, you, if you put your hand on her cheek, uh, it's not hard. It, she has a fluid in her. Did you put it there, Jimmy? <laughs> it's soft. You know what I mean? No. But mm. she, you have to warm her up. But I was. I don't want to hear about how you're going to warm up this prone, unconscious, dead but not dead female body full of fluid, okay? I'm just. <sighs> was able to communicate with her uh, and channel her. And um, there's uh, four other crew members that did get out and get the helmets. Yeah. And um, they went off toward, toward some ridge, but I would believe they eventually died because they had no uh, oxygen. Yeah. Um, yeah. She... Uh, I believe her. I believe her to be Japanese. Um, okay. Because there was a a craft. Um, there was a strange Oriental woman that came out of the sea. I I wait. Okay. Jesus fucking Christ. All right. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. I need to wheel it back just a minute. Uh, because he's trying to claim that this this uh this this obviously fake and not real person is Japanese. What? That is a paper mache doll, my friend. No, I'm sorry. This is this is this is ridiculous. This is the same quality of special effects as that disastrous Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles porno. Also, don't watch that. Don't ever look it up. Don't ever, ever, ever look that up. I don't know why I even mentioned it because now I feel like I'm I'm taking psychic damage from the memory of it. But yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, sure. Japanese. There was a a craft. Um, there was a strange Oriental woman that came out of the yeah. sea. Yeah, yeah. Back in the late eighteen hundreds. Nothing wrong with saying Oriental these days either. Uh, that the uh, Japanese fishermen. Uh, <laughs> you know, have talked about and, um, but the plants that I found on that craft were from earth. Earth. And they had some triangular little black triangular boxes that made out some type of ceramic was in there. Um, it's interesting that her, her uh, eye, eyebrows is so high compared to the humans in her, her because it's a terribly made dummy her mouth her lips are wide so well we're looking at the next step of human ev evolution she's definitely oh yeah 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 that's a good point random guy she definitely doesn't look uh japanese maybe vietnamese and <laughs> she doesn't look vietnamese either now the geologist when we examined the wreck he said it had been there 1.2 billion years, but mm. when I communicated okay. with EB, uh, it's more like 40,000 years is what she told me. Mm. Now, I believe the crater is 1.2 billion years old, and then when the spacecraft, you know, uh, skidded in there, it just stirred it up. So... I do believe the the crater is 1.2 billion years old, but I disagree with the geologists. I say that sh the craft's been there 40,000 years, or since our last ice age. Did they ever tell you? Did she tell you why they left her behind? She, she was uh she had already uh she was she she was injured. Okay. Oh. Uh, so they just like she, they lost 
the uh, compression in the crowd. She didn't have her helmet on. Okay. There was nothing that they could do for her. She is the nurse. They're not. They're not trained in that. Okay. She's a pilot. See, everybody has a dual. Uh, they're trained to have two jobs, but they're but they but they do one job. She's cross trained as the nurse. Uh huh. Okay. Um, but hey. she's a pilot. Is what Jenny. she really is. So she's the pilot nurse. Nobody else also received medical medical training, and so she got injured, and they were just like they they, they were just like oh well, and they just ditched her or some shit. What the fuck, Jimmy? Um, let me uh, because I know we're like it's we've been at this for a while. Lauren, do you feel like do you have the energy to just say one or two things? You want to try to communicate with that EVE and ask. Ask if she has a message for Jimmy. Just, just I don't want to like push you because I know we've been here for a while. So, <laughs> oh, it's okay. It, it's it, it. It takes a lot out of me, but you know, I'll, I'll do it anyway. Well, it's just, just, yeah. just. I, I uh, have, I, I had, I had a thing to say uh, as okay. well at the end if it is possible. Sure. Um. Yeah. Um. I was, I was tuning into her. Um. When I was uh, seeing the footage, uh, I do think it's, it's. Uh, it's real and it's true. Um, I was picking up that like um, she was in distress, and I was picking up also that she was some type of scientist uh, as well. So, that's, what what else would you like to know? Does she have a message for Jimmy? Uh, I see. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who piloted the ship after they they kicked out their pilot nurse? I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? Oh, man. All right. Tell us, Lauren. Mm, did she Thanks for the fluid. <laughs> she would like to be with her people. She um, it's their it's their custom and culture to be uh, with their people uh, when they when they pass away. It's very, very important for most extraterrestrial species um, that their that their bodies are returned to their home world so that they can actually. Uh, you know, be with their ancestors, and they can reincarnate on the home world that they belong on because they they have an affinity with the that race. So that's what that's what she would like to say. Well, let her know that if I return to Area Fifty One, that I'm going to make good, and I'm going to ask that she be transported back to her home planet. Uh, but I first have to figure out how to get back to Creech Air Force Base. And let her know that um, about <laughs> the butterflies and the flowers that I know she likes to smell flowers, and she, <laughs> you know, about the butterflies she likes, and that I have been communicating with her <laughs> as young as I was six years old, uh, and uh. I was around nineteen when I found her, and I'm not going to let her. Stay on her. If it's up to me, I'm going to request that uh, that she be brought home. That's my promise to her. Uh, <laughs> somebody needs somebody needs to make a Miramax romance movie out of this. Jesus fucking Christ! This, this is incredible. <laughs> A love that spanned dimensions in time. She was an interplanetary traveler who was struck by tragedy, locked in her body after being wounded and abandoned in space. He was the former hitman of Ho Chi Minh and a retired bridge officer from the USS Enterprise under the United Federation of Planets. He vowed with every breath he would move towards returning her body to rest with her ancestors back on her home woad. <laughs> he did just say she was Japanese. I know. But think about it. Think about it. <laughs> what the fuck? Communi communicate that to her now, if you would, please. Um, she does appreciate that. She 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 did hear you. So she does appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Cool. <laughs> I'm tired. I can't even remember what I was gonna ask. So I guess it's all good. 
Uh, oh no, 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 I remember. Uh, was uh, why did why did EBE um, contact Jimmy as early as the age of six? Do those two have like a connection with each other, like soul family or lifetimes or what? Um, I'm sensing that uh, the being in question sense that they could actually get help from him, which is most likely why they made contact. Uh, different uh, extraterrestrials that have been displaced on other planets, not just on this planet, but in others tend to approach other life forms that they think will be responsive and compassionate to their plight, which is most likely why uh, that being approached him. Hi. Okay. I, I had to name her Mona Lisa because I, uh, we don't have our alphabet. Their alphabet is different from our alphabet and I could not, pronounce her name so i saw a picture of mona lisa when i was a little boy yeah so i just gave her that name uh but i but she has when i channeled her uh, she had me going around uh picking up dragonflies and and butterflies and sniffing flowers for yeah. her you know yeah She's, she's very curious about uh, uh, wildlife, flowers, and such. What we got going on? All right. Okay, guys. Shall we call it? Oh, wait. Lauren, you have another final message? Yes. Um, James, I wanted to thank you publicly for always uh, reporting on difficult topics in, in service to humanity and, um, you know, bringing to light uh, – potential threats and um, being so positive and uh, thanks for inviting me and I yeah. wanted to also say to anyone that's listening to the broadcast humanity is very capable of um, very positive benevolent timelines but uh, these malevolent extraterrestrials have no claims to this planet or humanity and at the end of the day they actually do really fear humanity and their potential mm. so I would encourage humanity as a collective to stand together against the malevolent extraterrestrial threat and get them off the planet and reclaim our sovereignty. Yeah, damn right. Thank you for that. How about you, Jimmy? Final message? If anybody wants to contact me, just get a hold of James Rink. Yeah. And um, I'm looking for a corporate sponsor. Um, uh. I'm a former MIB, Men in Black. And I, I guess the best thing for me to do is come out of retirement. Yeah. Because we, we do have some problems occurring. And um, I have no choice now but to, uh, to go back to being an MIB. Yeah. I'm glad you're, you're going to. I hope we get do some. Do you remember using those little neuralizers? <laughs> we need. We need. Jimmy Payne to get I don't mean I don't know about corporate sponsorship. But, oh big yawn puppy. I don't know if he needs like corporate sponsorship, but we need uh like a production crew to to help document more of Jimmy Payne and his adventures because because I, I oh, swear to God, it's so good. James, I've done it all. I was one of the youngest MIBs in the history. Yeah. Um, and I've, it's just not Evie Mona Lisa that's reached out. I've had, um, I've had the little grays that reach out oh, sure. uh, to me. Little tiny fellers. Uh, the wreckage of 1947 hit, happened, you know, and, um, I'm, I'm, I've seen so many different types of different extraterrestrials. Ah that nothing excites me anymore oh man and if any it's like me and my no i'm not making that joke jesus christ extraterrestrial <laughs> needs help just you know let me know nope. and um and i'll do what i can do but my i gave uh eb mona lisa my my word and um and i and if i return I will make good that she she's reunited, and I will make good that some of the um, the victims of the Roswell crash that they return as well <laughs> to their loved ones. 
That's very that's very big of you, Jimmy. It's incredible. Good job. Oh, oh, I have to, shit! Sorry, I got these. Put down the noisy cricket, James. Everybody, freeze. <laughs> you didn't hear any of this today. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. I heard it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> Jimmy. Thank you so much. Um, I let's all hold up positive intention. I think, I think tomorrow. Um, well, I guess it'll be the eighth, right? So, uh, it will be a great day, and we'll all, all we'll have a well, we'll put out intention. Well, I'll have a really positive timeline. So, everybody, if you want to learn more about the work I do, uh, uh -huh. you can go to neologicaltech.com yeah. and purchase a copy of my book over here, mm. Lone Wolf. And uh, I'm uh, yeah. So there's like. 300 pages now i can't remember 400 pages something uh whatever it is um of, of uh, ssp content and you can learn about uh, super soldiers and also get yourself a meditation cube to help you relax you meditation put cube your lap Fuck you me. meditate about 30 minutes a day you can use that to help you out with memory recalls um i'm going to uh, los angeles this week to uh, speak at the alien event so the i'm so mad i couldn't go to that they had a whole fucking convention for super soldiers and it was down uh, down in L.A. And I was like, dude, okay, okay. I wonder if maybe I can make this one of those events that like I could maybe crowdfund a chance to go to. Uh, if I, I think it was like last, I think it was like a week and a half ago is when it happened. And then I looked at how much it was going to cost just for tickets to get in. And it was insane how expensive it was. So I didn't even mention it to anybody. I was like, no way, no way fucking way no way but uh i wish do i have that book no i wish i had that book but no i don't have it you getting it get your tail get your tail oh you're not gonna do it i was gonna try and get her to chase her tail and i'd turn the camera on for it but the link is in the description if you want to come hear me speak um i'm also going to be speaking at the spruce pine alien festival here in north carolina so that's in june and everybody be sure to get a ticket to the first ever Super Soldier Talk conference. It's just really just like a one small one day gathering, but it's going to be jam packed full of fun. And we got seven speakers, and uh, we're also going to when have like a Super Soldier. Not like, but when is a, that? Um, we're going to have a ga gathering that afternoon um, afterward on the beach. We're going to have some music. I'm gonna. I've got a mixed track um, tape that I'm working on, and uh, then um, when is that? The day of being event, and we also have which is free day also all on the beach, right? In Florida, St. Pete. Florida, and then um, we're going to have a fun super solar talk, uh, um, water park event party too on that Sunday afterwards. So you should uh, join me. Um, click on the what link the below and fuck? come on, come on out. So that's it. I guess everybody, right? Good night. Goodbye. We wish you love and light wherever you are. Uh, and, uh till next time. Okay, 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 okay. I think it's called the Timeline of Disclosure Conference. Yes, it is. July 11th to July 12th in Indian Rocks Beach, Florida. No way. Dude. Dude. I was supposed to be on tour uh, in July, but that tour got canceled. Where the hell is Indian Rocks, Florida? I don't even know where that is. Like, what is that close to? Clearwater, St. Peter. Oh, it's by Tampa. Oh, okay, okay. It's by Tampa. All right. Uh, and let's see. How much is it? How much is it? How much is it? Uh... uh, uh. Let's see. It's like 165 bucks a night. Stay for the day of being the water park party. Rate goes up to 204 a night and then check out. Okay. Okay. Parking for ticket holders is free. That's cheap. That's hella cheap. Dude. Dude. No way. I want to go. So we're gonna have James Rink. Uh, I've heard, I've, I've watched ones with Ra Cloud. I don't know who Dylan Monroe is. Obviously, Lauren's gonna be there. That's incredible. 
Dude. Okay. Okay. I want to go. I super want to go. That's actually really totally, totally affordable. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna goof off and and find out how much it's gonna be for like flight tickets and shit to get out there. It's a sign, yeah, 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 yeah. It's a sign. I should absolutely go. Florida seems the most apropos place for it, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I agree. I super agree. Holy fuck! Oh, dude. I need to get a selfie with Jim with James Rink. Two twenty for couples. I can guarantee you one thing. If there is one universal truth in this this world, it's that I will never convince memory to go to a fucking wingnut convention with me. I don't think that could ever, ever happen. As much as I would want it to, Hemlock will fit, fit in just fine in Florida. Yes. That's exactly what I'm fucking thinking about. <laughs> I would need a much better wig. I would need such a better fucking wig. You could RV it. I'm not driving to Florida. Fuck that, dude. That would be that would suck ass. That would suck so much ass. Anyway, before I move, I switch cameras again. I just want to point this out. Yeah. Just I'm just yeah 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 yeah. All right. Anyway, um, <laughs> hang on a sec. Uh. Oh, hi, puppy, Pee. You're on camera. You're on camera. Oh, sweet dog. What a sweet girl. What a good girl. <gasps> All right. Anyway, um, so again, uh, just want to. I'll I'll let you guys know if uh I I figure out. Whether or not I can even try and do that, and we'll we'll plan accordingly. Uh, if I was to see if Hemlock Moonwolf wanted to attend that conference, I think Hemlock would have to get his hair did. Better wig. Um, order cheap but decent wigs online. Uh, if you have a link to to cheap but decent wigs online, then you absolutely should should send that to me uh, at at the soonest availability. Um, I know, baby. I know you're such a sweet girl. Uh, so to just to reiterate a couple of things real quick, I am going on tour in about a week. I'll be in the South, uh, in New Orleans, uh, Mississippi, all over Tennessee, Muscle Shoals, Alabama, uh, Upper Upper Western North Carolina, Somerset, Kentucky, Nashville, et cetera, et cetera, Memphis, blah 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 blah. Um, so if you're in those areas, uh, hit me up. Um, I will be documenting those on my new TikTok that I just made, which you should follow, moto.holiday. Uh, so go 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 follow me over there. Let's see. Did I get any new followers since I've been shilling? Did I? Did I? Did I? One! I got one more follower! Fuck yeah! That's the power of YouTube. And also, this is not the Wingnut Roundup. The Wingnut Roundup is going to be this Sunday. This Sunday. Uh, and uh, I will be uh, only doing a two-hour show, which is why you got these two extra streams this month. So, uh, yeah. that's. Uh, does Jeff have a crotch cam? I can. But you gotta pay. Anyway... <laughs> That's uh, that's pretty much going to be it for today, guys. Uh, I hope you go off and have an amazing day. And uh, I will hopefully see you guys very soon. Hopefully I'll see you all on Sunday. And uh, we'll have ourselves a ball. Thanks for joining me, guys. Have a fantastic afternoon. Bye! Anyway, this is what we got going on. <laughs> Bathroom passes, cutting classes, squeezing ass. Smoking blunts was a daily routine since 13. A chubby nigga on the scene. I used to have to trade deuce and the deuce deuce in my bubble.